Yo, yo, what's up? Back with another trading recap for the end of the month of March. It's March 31st. And today I finished up $32.74, which is, I guess, pretty decent considering my average is usually between $20 and $30. I made a little bit more than my average. Um, been trying to push size a little bit and trying to expand my profit and um, today was very slow I guess out of the open not really much was going on um, until Wafu started ripping up well Rafu, Wafu ripped up I didn't even see Wafu until like 10 o'clock and no yeah 10 o'clock and it was on very light volume so I was thinking that there could be a high risk of a false breakout until around 10.30 or 10.15 or 10.30 when that ripped from, from here, let me pull it up on here. Until that ripped from here at 10.30 all the way up to uh, like 10.45ish. It was a lot of volume and I was able to capitalize on some. Unfortunately, I did not make this giant this giant um, rip from $12.80 to $15. Um, I forget what I was doing. I don't know. I just didn't trade that. But I bought this dip here and made some profit here. Um, and I, I made majority of my profit on that trade and also majority of my profit on TAOP um, right out of the open. I bought the bottom of this candle here and sold up here and then uh, I got chopped up a little bit. I bought this candle because I saw that it dipped and broke the new low but got bought all the way back up. So I was thinking this candle was going to rip all the way up through VWAP and get like a nice dollar, dollar fifty per share gain. However, it dipped a little bit and was failing to break out and then I just sold up in here um, because I didn't want to risk it anymore. Because I was, because if it was gonna go, it was gonna go off of that candle right after that candle, and so it didn't didn't end up going. We had a, a nice bull trap here where a bunch of shorts got in, and this thing faded all fucking day. The shorts made a killing today on TAOP. Um, unfortunately, I can't even short yet. I'm not at twenty five thousand yet. So, but pretty soon I'm uh, gonna make it to 25,000 and I'll be able to start my start creating a short strategy. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Wafu is coming up to the high of day here at 15. Um, the high of day is 1539. I don't think I'm gonna trade it because it's midday and volume is very low compared to over here. Here is very high volume. Um, right now is not much volume so it's very it's going to be very uh, much more risky because look at this. Holy shit. Look at that drop. Wow. That was a nice 50 cent drop there. If anybody was trying to trade that trade a breakout move over 15 bucks got fucked up right on that drop. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm going to trade Wafu anymore. I don't think I'm going to trade anymore for the rest of the day, even though rail is kind of looking good right now for over 620 uh, I could take the trade but I don't think I am let's see how it turned how it how, what happens just because it's midday it's just very high likelihood of false breakouts things don't like to have like to follow through during midday it's very a lot less momentum so I don't like to trade midday. Um, maybe if I'm going short, that would be a good idea to trade midday just because there's a lot lower volume and things tend to fade um, midday. So um, yeah, let's get into my exact trades here. So let's cancel that. Let's open up my monitor here. Go to account. Okay, right here, and we'll detach this. Pull this over here. Okay. So at nine o'clock, 
I was trading RKDA this morning at nine o'clock, but really nothing. I wanted I wanted to buy the break of VWAP here at nine o'clock, um, and I got a little bit, but um, it was just such tight range that I don't think it was worth me trading at all. I mean, I only made a couple cents on it. However, it did go up another 10 cents from where I sold. But, I mean, it took seven minutes to get there, and it probably wouldn't be worth me trading that. Um, then I traded T I started trading TAOP at 9.11. 9.11.11. And that was... Oh, on this candle here, I bought this dip here. Just only five shares. I think I was just getting getting uh, a little a little wet in the markets, just testing the waters. And I bought the next can. I sold down the next candle for a nice 15, 15 cent, sixteen cent per share gain, uh, which isn't bad. And then next, I went in with 20 shares here at 9.30 at 12.43 and 12.58. So here's 12.43 is the lower end of this candle. And then I added 10 more at 10.58 when I got bought back up. And I sold at 12.93 and 12.98. So here's 12.90. This is at 9.30, 12.93, and then up here at 12.98, I pretty much got the top wick of that candle. That was really nice. At this point, I was up, I was up like 12 bucks. I was pretty damn, that's pretty damn good. However, on my next trade though, looks like I bought at 9.31, because on this candle, it looks like I got faked out here. I bought at the top of this at 9, at 12, Twelve dollars and ninety-two cents, because I thought it was gonna rip. I thought it was gonna rip, um, and then I got, and then I sold at the bottom of this candle at twelve thirty-eight for ten shares. So that's what is that six, five dollars right there, and then I had I was holding twenty more shares of TAOP, um, and I sold that at twelve seventy-one. That was about, that's like about break even, uh, break even on the rest. So I was take $5 off the top of that previous trade just a minute ago. That wasn't too good. Um, and then I added, I traded it again. At 32 and 33, so I bought 10 at 12.38 down here. And then I bought 20 more at 9.33. So here I bought 20 more here because I thought this candle, since it was getting bought up, I thought this candle was going to push up and go through VWAP and get like a nice, nice rip out of the open. But it ended up fading, and I sold 20 at 12.60, and then 10 at 12.44. So I was another loss. So here I'm sitting up only about five or six dollars on the day, and then at 9.35, I bought 12.77. 9.35, 12. Holy shit! No, really? 9.35.01. No. Okay, so I bought here twelve seventy seven. I sold at twelve eighty eight. Only ten cents. So I bought for the break of this for this into this bull trap. I bought into this bull trap, but I sold before it flushed. I made only a dollar off of that. Then I bought ten more shares at nine thirty six. So here's nine thirty six. I bought five at eleven eighty three and five at eleven ninety. Wow, nice. So I literally bought the bottom of this candle at 11.83, and I added five more at 11.90, and I sold them at I sold five at 11.97, 11.97, and 
and then I sold, I guess I got faked out or something. I think I got faked out and I sold five at 11.90 for break even. So I only made like pennies on that one, like 35 cents. And then on RKDA, I went in with 50 shares at nine, RKDA at 9.30, 9.39, so 9.39, let's find 9.39. Yes, I bought the dip here at for $3.11 here, 50 shares. Um, I thought it was too overextended to the downside, so I was planning on buying this dip and selling this pop up here for the, for like the uh, pop over like 3.15. And it didn't end up going, so I sold some for at 314, 313, 313, and 310. So right up here, right under that 315 level, which never broke. So thank God I took what I had off the table. Um, or else I would have been stuck in this here, going down another 10 cents. And then on YVR, I took a 40 share position on YVR. This was nice, wow. 946. So 940. So it looks like I missed this here. I remember watching this going all the way up. And then I took some. I was waiting for the first red candle to buy the dip. There's 946. First red candle went in with 40 shares at 486. So it was a little bit high, 486. 481 and I sold them pretty much break even 484 but then I bought three more later in that same minute 30 more and I my average in that one was on, was like 465 so that later that minute I pretty much got the bottom of this candle at uh, 947 so here's 947 pretty much at the bottom of this candle at 464 and of course like what I usually do when I have a fucking perfect position I'm in perfect position right here all I had to do was hold and I would have made 40 cents a share 40 cents a share on 30 shares that is three that's like about 12 I could have made 12 dollars in one minute right here $12 in one minute. All I, all I had to do was just hold for this candle. And of course, I sell too fucking early before waiting for that candle. And I sold for fucking five cents. So I made like, I made like two, like two dollars, barely two dollars on that trade. I left so much money on that trade. That's not good at all. I just need to, I need to learn to be more patient. Need to be, learn to be more patient. I mean, I bought the bottom of this candle, and it came up, and then it came back down, and I was probably thinking that it was gonna flash down again. So I guess I mean, it's hard to know. It's really hard to know. But then I guess on my next entry at 948, which was on this candle, I bought for the break of five dollars at 943. I remember getting kind of stuck up here and nine, right under five dollars. And I knew it was going to break $5 by at least one or two pennies. And so it would come up and test $5 and then pull back to like 488, 490, and then try to try it again, then pull back to 488, 490, and then try again. And so on that micro kind of small 10 second pullback before retesting $5, I bought at 493. Um, because I knew it was going to come at, come at again and at least test $5 uh, or at least break it by one penny before flushing. Uh, it's because the stocks usually do that just to test to see if there's any more demand beyond that level. So since $5 is a critical like uh, level where people would put stop losses, especially after this candle here, it's topped out at $5. And so if shorts were getting in on this candle, well, in these two candles, they would put their stop at 501 or 502 uh, because they could potentially risk only 10 cents if they got up up here for the potential of making multiple dollars, um, multiple times their risk. 
um, on their short position. And so that's why it's smart. That's why it's, the stock price will tend to move just a couple cents beyond that critical resistance level just to test to see if there's any more stop, lo stop losses or demand left to the upside before flushing to the downside. Um, so 493 sold at 501. Okay, I mean made like a couple like like a dollar and eighty cents off of that. Then 496 I bought again at 49949. So I, I think I bought this dip and I sold over five dollars. Okay, I mean it's these are small scalps. I mean it all adds up. It adds up. This one was a thirty cent loss here, nine fifty. Yeah, so I think I bought here at eight nine thirty eight nine. No, wait, no four ninety three. Yeah, what am I even saying right now? Four nine fifty at four eighty three. Oh no, I had a thirty cent win, so I bought the dip here at four eighty three, and I sold at four eighty six. Thirty cents, I'll take it for ten shares. Then I went in with 30 shares at YVR and only made only a couple of cent, 30 cents on that one. Um, that's uh, 9.54. So 9.54 is on this candle here. I like to buy the buy the dips on after a flush because uh, at the bottom of each candle it tends to get bought up a lot. So that's why I like. I, I have a lot of experience buying these dips, especially off of this support. Here you can see this candle uh, has support on this level. So I bought this down here, 465, and then added at 472. But I, but I took some off only at 473 and 471. So on this candle, the next candle, uh, which I guess was a good move because it came down a little bit more. But then this is where I went in. I went in heavy right here. I could have bought, I should have bought way more, but I bought in under 60 cents. So here's 460 at 955, huh? 955, really? Oh, wait, I got, yeah, no, I got faked out here. I bought under 460, I sold some up here, and it flushed again. Which I was out before to flush. I only made a couple cents on that one, or maybe a dollar, not like a dollar to two dollars on that one on that scalp. Then nine fifty seven and nine fifty eight, I got under four fifty. I was under four fifty. Four fifty level is right here. Let me draw something on the chart. This is good here. Four fifty. I got in under here. I was in. 10, 30, 40 shares, 40 shares under this level. But because of my impatience, I took some off all the way up at 4, 454 and 455, sold some at 453. That's like four fucking dollars. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. So pretty much that was a, I pretty much butchered that perfect entry like I did over here. I should probably write that down. I'm going to write that down because I really need to learn to be more patient and scale. This is, I've been dealing with this same problem since I've started trading. My impatience and not scaling out over time and letting the trade develop. Because this is an obvious line of support here. And I was even drawing the trend line. Let me get the volume bars out of here. Let me get the level two out of here, make the chart nice and big. So you can clearly see the support. So you can clearly see the support level right freaking here, right here, off of this candle. Or you can call it off this if you count the wick. 
support off of this level. It came, it made the high up here, came all the way down. It was so extended to the downside, plus it was bouncing off support. There was a high likelihood of a bounce right here. And if it wasn't going to bounce, you cut it for only a 10 cent loss. And I could have had a potential of a 30 cent upside, a potential 30 cent upside if I was patient, but of course I wasn't patient and I take some off immediately when it's in the green, which is it's just very frustrating. It's very frustrating I'm leaving a lot of money on the table. I could have made a good profit right there, but we're gonna write this down, YVR, YVR at 9.57. Nine fifty-seven a.m. Bought perfect dip off support. But wasn't patient enough to see through the full bounce. left money on table and same with and i'm going to put same with dip buy at 9 9 48. it's tough because sometimes like these small little quick scalps are very profitable for me and it actually proves to me that like Sometimes when I do buy those dips, they do tend to reverse real quick. Like this bounce here, that sometimes like it'll pop up and then it'll reverse again. It'll reverse going down. Um, and that would have been like a perfect entry for me. I would have made money on a, a small little window of time that the stock was going up on a downtrend. But I don't know when I should sell real quickly and then when I should hold on just a little bit longer. Because, like, let me pull up Wafu. Some of these pops, see, like, you buy this dip here, it pops up. You want to sell almost immediately or else you're in the red. Same with this pop here. And same with this pop. You buy the dip here. If you're buying the dip here, you sell a pop, you make money before it goes to the downside. If you held on to this, you would have lost money. And so sometimes, I think it's I think it depends on the position of where I'm buying the dip. So if I'm buying the dip out here after it already dipped so many times, it doesn't have enough momentum left to to have a longer run. That's what I think. I have to like almost drill that in my mind. But after a fresh breakout, look at this breakout, a fresh breakout running $2. And then on the first dip, there's a very high likelihood of continued momentum um, because it's so fresh, like the breakout is so fresh that the bounce is gonna be a significant bounce. But then on the second bounce, see, like your, the momentum almost ran out. There's no one to buy anymore because everybody already got out up here. So let's pull up YVR again. Fresh breakout, ripped up $2, came down, first dip. Well, this is, could be considered a first dip, but I would think that um, this is still up in that, that uh, hot, the highs of the days, you know, like the, like the, at the highest level of the day. So I wouldn't consider that a significant dip. I would just consider this a micro dip. But this is the first five minute dip. Uh, it's a significant dip. And so it's normal to think, I think it's good to think that there's gonna be a significant bounce because look at how extended it is. It was after a fresh breakout and there's still a lot of volume and momentum uh, in the market, especially at 10 o'clock. But then you say you want to buy, I mean, even this dip. I mean, there was some buy, there was some buyer there that pushed it up. But it took a longer time frame. It took like 20 minutes. This was only a five-minute like reaction. Um, so I think it's almost, 
in the position, I'm gonna write it. Only cell pops. Well, no, I don't wanna make a, a all or nothing type of statement here. I wanna say um, dips after fresh breakout has higher likelihood of having a significant bounce bounce with follow through I'm going to put especially before 11 a.m. Especially before 11 a.m. See, if you buy these pops and you hold them on this dip, you're screwed. You're absolutely screwed. So forget it. Forget that. I had to make that clear. Especially even on this dip. You buy in this dip and you hold almost like you did this one, you would have got flushed a huge candle down so that's not good um, so I think buying the dip is you should always I should know that I only should hold on to a certain dip buy when it's closer to a fresh breakout where it's still high volume and there's a higher chance of having a lot more follow through and momentum in the market, especially before midday. Okay, so then I was just scalping Wafu, scalp Wafu for a little bit, scalp more Wafu. I think I did have one, yeah, here we go. I went in with 100 shares on Wafu. 100 shares, this is a very big position. And I think it was after this fresh... Oh, I knew exactly where I was. <coughs> and I fucking did it again. Oh, my God. I fucking did it again. The thing that I was just trying to avoid, I did it again. So I bought here. I was scaling in at 943, 100 shares. Nine, on this flush down, I knew it was going to bounce. Because it was up so high. And it had a fresh breakout, $2 runs, a $2 run, and a pullback... A dollar fifty off the high, um, and it was a significant candle flush. This flush in this candle, it was a dollar eighty. No, a dollar and twenty cent flush. Bought the bottom of this candle, I was scaling in. I was under my average was in the eighties, not thirteen eighty. I was in here. Started taking. I, I took them all hundred off. No, I took fifty off at thirteen ninety eight up here. Took took the rest off at thirteen ninety. I made I made maybe fuck dude. I made like eight dollars. Eight dollars on a fourteen hundred dollar investment. I mean I guess I can't complain. It's some money, at least it is money. A lot of the people most people that are trading are not making money. Um so me to be making at least some sort of money is worth it for me. But I need to learn to hold on because maybe I guess the position that I bought at it was more of a scalp play because I was buying the f after this flush at the bottom of the flush here instead of waiting for the setup. So I guess it was good that I s sold into this, into this candle here because it did come down and go all the way as low as 1350. And that would scare the bejeebus out of me holding 100 shares down like $30. If I held it down to thirteen fifty, and so my next, I should have, I did what I, I, I did what. I can't fucking speak today. I don't know why. I think I'm dehydrated. Um, I did what I should have, because this is more of a scout play, and especially after the flush, I didn't wait for a setup. This was supposed to be a play that I sold immediately on the reaction back upwards when people are covering their position. And longs are trying to average their sell themselves down at the bottom of this candle, which, okay, I guess it was a very good idea that I sold there. Um, but um, 
I should have went in hev just as heavy on the on the setup on the A plus setup that was coming up at ten forty seven. So ten forty seven, I went in here right here because it, it dipped down here, bought back up to to reclaim the support level. This candle was a candle of indecision. It didn't know where it was going, and it was one hundred sixty seven thousand shares in volume, which is decent. And then it dipped down again and bought back up. That is so fucking bullish. You don't even know how it can't get this market cannot get any more bullish than this candle right here. These these three candles. It is so fucking bullish. I should have went in a hundred shares right here. But I only went in with fifty. I went in with fifty shares. My average was at thirteen fifty seven. So that was way down here. 1357 down here. Great, great position. Great fucking position. You can't get any better than that. You really can't. And guess what? I sold 10 at 1363. 10 at 1363. Right here. Why am I selling there? I don't know. 1373. Sold right there. 1380. 1387 sold right here and by that time I am out I'm, I'm, I'm already out I'm out before the rip before the fucking rip <sighs> even if I held 50 shares at 1357 to the top of this candle to make the, the next candle the one minute candle high let's say I, I, I sell up at the pop the pop, the pop that I'm supposed to sell at, right up in here. There, even if I got the low of it, it's like fourteen fifteen. That is, let's do the math. No, that's fifty. That's sixty cents a share. Sixty cents a share times fifty shares. That's a thirty dollar trade right there in one minute. Thirty dollars in one minute. I would have been up over fifty dollars on the day. Um, and with my other three. Let me write this down. Same with Wafu. Where there's other three, I could have been up over $100 on today's profit. Um, but my impatience is really getting and frustrating me. And I know it's just so hard to like, to see, like, it is bullish. This is bullish right here, but my emotions take over when I'm in, in the green. It's like I'm, I need to take the money now because I'm afraid that some magic condition that the shorts are all going to storm in and flush the stock price down $3 and I'm going to lose everything. And that's my fear because that's what happened to me before. It's happened to me on two accounts. I blew up two accounts. That's why I'm so impatient because on the stocks that I was patient on, I was patiently losing money. And that's why I cannot be patient when I'm day trading right now. But I have to realize that that is not me. That that person who was trading all that time ago was is not me now. He doesn't have the experience that he does now, and doesn't have the capital, doesn't have the experience, doesn't have the back testing that he does right now. And so that wasn't me. The person that was trading those two other accounts last year and four years ago was not me. I just have to realize that and I have to trust my decisions when I'm buying these fucking dips because I can make so much more money, leaving so much on the table. And I'm not going to I'm not going to be able to be anywhere close to financial independence unless I can trust my decisions day trading. And if I can't do that, I'm going to be spending the rest of my life working at a restaurant busting my ass 40 to 50 hours a week on my feet until I'm dead. So I have to learn to trust my decisions. <laughs> I'm being so hard on myself though. I just got to chill out, but I have to like stay disciplined. I can't be too hard on myself. I mean, I, I made so much progress since I started. I have never thought I'd ever be profitable ever. And so I'm very proud of that fact that I've been profitable the past three months, and I've, I'm up maybe over $600 in profit. So I'm very happy and grateful for that. Very, very happy. But there's a lot of work to be done. Um, 
and I'm putting it in every day, every goddamn day. And then pretty much the rest of Wafu here, I was just scalping, scalping this range here. Made only like a couple bucks. And then I and then I went back down to just like, it was like 11 o'clock already. And 11 o'clock, that's when I usually, I, I start sizing down to like maybe five or 10 shares because I don't think it's worth the risk anymore because the volume has started to dissipate in the market and there's a lot less momentum. It's very less likely things are about to just rip up and hold those levels and continue ripping up. So that's why I like to downsize after 11 o'clock. So that, and that takes me to right now, which I think I'm done trading for today. Uh, I don't really see anything else. Wafu is pretty much done. It's clearing out the high of day and taking out um, the longs are selling right now and the shorts are starting to get in. So it's not a good setup right now. So I think I'll just take my $32 and I'll come back next week with the new month. Hopefully I can finally start dialing in my patience and learning when to hold on to some shares after a fresh breakout in the first minute, first one minute dip and the first five minute dip, hold on to those shares. Only sell maybe half when you're in the first pop and then sell the next half in the second pop. Uh, I just need to learn to hold on just a little bit longer to expand the amount of money I'm making. Today could have been a bigger green day. However, um, it wasn't for my, because my uh, impatience on some of these trades, but um, it is what it is. It's just part of the learning curve. And now I know what I need to work on and it's just gonna take a long time to uh, re reprogram my mind to the new me, the new me who's trading in these markets in the in going to be April 2021, and not the person who was trading last year, who could not, who was patient on stocks going down and holding on to stocks that were downtrending for months and losing thousands and thousands of dollars. That's not me anymore, and so I just need to realize that, and I need to reprogram my mind and get used to being more patient and also taking my profit equally uh, when I have it. So it's just a kind of like a balancing act. So right now I'm taking a little bit too much off too fast. And however, before, before when I first started trading, I was at the other end. I was holding on too long. I was holding on the gains too long. I was holding on to my losers too long. And my losers, I was holding on even longer. And so I kind of shifted that and I was like, okay, I'm done doing this. I'm not holding over it. I'm not holding a stock anymore. I'm not holding this stock anymore overnight. I'm just going to take my money as soon as I have it. I'm just going to scalp. And so now I'm fucking always swinging back this way. And I'm like taking my, my shares off immediately when I'm pennies in profit. And that's just not going to work long term and not going to fulfill my financial goals. And so I need to kind of bring the pendulum back slowly this way and have that balance of holding on to my winners a little bit longer than my losers, especially when you're in a green trade. And when you're in a losing trade, I need to cut those really, really, really fast. Um, as soon as the chart is broken or the, the support level's not holding, I need to cut those. Um, and if it comes back and it reclaims that level, if it just dips down and reclaims it, then okay, I mean, I missed out on a, on a small position um, a small amount of profit in the long run. And I can always get back in and capture the rest of that up move because when the support breaks and reclaims, it's always a good sign that it's going to move higher, uh, especially when there's a lot of volume coming in. Um, so yeah, that's all I have today for my recap at the end of March on March 31st, 2021. And I will be back in April uh, tomorrow with my trading recap. Uh, maybe though, I have to work all day. I don't know if I'll be able to do a recap tomorrow, but the next day I will definitely do a recap. It's just hard for me to find time with balancing a job and um, trading. I'm so busy uh, trying to balance this stuff, trying to do it, do it all. And uh, But pretty soon I'm going to be trading full time. I, I, I firmly believe that. So 
catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Or if it's just me who's watching in the future, that's cool too. Um, so uh, yeah, that's my trading recap for March 31st.